Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you Lionel Barrymore in Yankee Storekeeper on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark brings you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, we dramatize a story by R.E. Gould called Yankee Storekeeper, a warmly human story of those days not so long ago, days before radio and airmail and streamliners, when the general store was one of the landmarks of the American small town. The club, you might say, where people met to exchange gossip, to talk politics, and to feel themselves a unit in the greater unit of their country. And, to speak personally, I think a great deal of very good sense was talked in those stores, surrounded by the genial warmth of the stove and the smells of the merchandise, and with the storekeeper enjoying the proceedings as much as anyone. They sold a lot of things in the small-town general store, and still do, and I think it could be said that among them has always been democracy. Our story tonight is a reminder of all this, and to star in it we have that incomparable American, Lionel Barrymore. And now, here is Frank Goss from the makers of Hallmark Cards. When you want to remember your friends, there's one way to be sure the card you send receives an extra welcome. Look for that identifying Hallmark on the back when you select it. For words to express your feelings and designs to express your good taste, that Hallmark on the back is your guide. Like the sterling on silver, it's a mark of distinction that all quickly recognize. And it tells your friends, you cared enough to send the very best. Our star tonight, Lionel Barrymore, is appearing by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of the Technicolor musical, Singing in the Rain, starring Gene Kelly, Donald O'Connor, and Debbie Reynolds. And now, Hallmark Playhouse, presenting R.E. Gould's Yankee Storekeeper, starring Lionel Barrymore. <laughs> General Store, Dan Whitney, proprietor. These are the words painted in big block letters on the sign over the porch steps. Indoors, past the candy case, the jumble of auto tires and boxes of soap, the white-haired proprietor leans on the counter and peers thoughtfully through his steel-rimmed glasses at the sacks of poultry feed piled beside the big base burner. He chews on a pencil stub for a moment, then jots down a figure in a worn leather book. Then, as his eyes wander to the opposite counter and a stock of heavy boots. Afternoon, Mr. Whitney. Huh? Why, sure, it's Tom Willis. <laughs> when did you get back to town, son? This morning. As soon as I got my diploma, I hopped the train to have one last look at the old place. You mean you ain't staying? Well, what's there to keep me here? My folks are all gone. Well, but they left you the farm. I'm selling it. There's no future up here in the backwoods, Mr. Whitney. Everything's gone to seed. Oh, that's what you learned at college, huh? Everything's in the big city. Well, that's where the big companies are and the good jobs. Uh -huh. Well, uh, just what kind of a job are you looking for? Well, one with good pay, regular vacations, hmm? pension plan, health insurance, something with guaranteed security. Guaranteed security. Hmm? <laughs> you know, son, I just hope I never grow as old as you are right now. Oh, Mr. Whitney, you don't understand. Times have changed since your day. Uh -uh. We want more out of life now, and we can get more. All the things that you've missed. All the things I've missed, huh? Tom, have you got a few minutes? Oh, yeah, sure. All right, then. Pull that chair up over there, will you? Now, 
When I was your age, Tom, I was already clerking in a grocery store, big town store. It took me 10 years working there just to decide that I wanted a store of my own and to find out the, the right gal. When Jenny and I got married, we started looking around for a town we'd like. A town that'd like us, too. <laughs> and then one day, I read an ad in the Boston paper that this store was for sale. Jenny and I took the train up here to see it, and, well, we was walking up from the depot. We made up our mind. It's the sort of town I've always wanted to live in, Dan. Huh? A tiny place. But just enough people for company and not too many to feel crowded. Oh, Dan, this is our home. <laughs> the day I took over the store, my education really began. I found that the man who runs the country store needs the patience of Job, the strength of Samson, and the wisdom of a jury of Solomons, especially when it comes to the drummers from the big city. My company's bringing out a new product, Mr. Whitney. Don't want none. Buy five cases from me, I'll give you one free. Don't want none. Ornery, cuz, aren't you? Yep. When it comes to buying goods, none of my customers want. Oh, look, this is your last chance. Only come once a year. So do taxes, and I don't care if I ever see any of them again. <laughs> I was an ornery cuss as far as the drummers were concerned. But sometimes I was on the receiving end of the deal. Here your wife's been looking to buy a cow, Dan. I got a good one. You have? Uh, how much milk she give? Half a pail every day. Bring her around, Jose. I'll buy it. <laughs> hey, it turned out the cow filled half a pail, all right. A quart size. How much asking for that new brand of tobacco, Dan? Six cents plug. If it takes six plugs, how much off for cash? Well, now, uh, let's see. Six times six, 66. You're going to have them for an even six days. Sold. Dishonest? No. You see, Jim was a shoplifter. Every time he'd steal something off the counter, I'd even the score with one of my bargains. <laughs> it was uh, the better than turning Jim over to the police and breaking his wife's heart. <laughs> some years I made a good living for Jenny and me, and some years hardly anything. I can remember one of the bad years in particular. Yes, even the day the trouble began, Jenny was in the store helping me fill some of the orders, Jose Tuttle stopped and gave the afternoon to whittling and smoking by the stove. Dan, I hear you bought a horse off Jerry Stockpole. Yeah, uh, bought him for a sled horse. Jenny, have you found the order for Sarah Foster? Oh, I'm filling it now, Dan. <laughs> a sled horse, eh? Yeah. Uh, but I hear you ain't keeping him. I hear you wanting to sell him. Yeah. For the right price. How much? Twenty-five dollars. Awful low price, ain't it? What's wrong with him? Well, you've seen him. Looks all right, don't he? And he's got a good mouth, legs all right, nice color, clever as a sheep. Mm-hmm. But for twenty-five dollars... Well, I might take him if I was sure. Well, what, well in that case, I, I won't lie to you, Jose. He's got two faults. I'll tell you one before we trade. And if we trade, I'll tell you the other. Just two faults, huh? Yeah. What's the first one? Well, if you turn him out to pasture, he's awful hard to catch. Uh-huh. Hard to catch. Yeah. Good afternoon, uh, you, Mr. Whitney. I am, but I don't want none. Mr. Whitney, oh, I... Whatever you're selling, we're overstocked on it. Oh, I'm not a drummer. I'm not selling anything. I just came in to look around. Oh, oh well, then I'm glad to see you. Uh, Jenny, will you take care of this gentleman? Yes, Dan. Thank you. Uh, Dan, huh? uh, about that horse. Oh. You say if you turn him out to pasture, he's awful hard to catch. That's right. Well, suppose a fellow didn't turn him out to pasture. He'd be easy to catch then, wouldn't he? Oh, it's the easiest thing in the world. All right, sir. I'm buying. 
Here's money. Fifteen. Twenty-five. He's yours, Jose. All right. Now, what's that other thing that's wrong with him? Well, he's good for nothing when you do catch him. <laughs> Give me my money back. A uh, deal's a deal, Jose. This evens up for the one that the cow you sold me. It's a swindle. It's a robbery. Uh, Mr. Whitney. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. You've got a nice little store here, oh, but uh, you're a bit behind the times in your merchandising. Oh, I'm satisfied with it. Perhaps, but uh, how about your customers? My name is George Hastings, Mr. Whitney. I'm your new competitor. How's that? My company sent me up from Boston to open a new store here. Hmm. We'll operate cash and carry at the lowest prices. And I'll be your first customer, mister. It's about time this old Skinner got his comeuppance. Just a minute now. Come on, mister. Yes. Let me show you where to put your store. I own the building. It's right across the street from this pirate. I uh, hope we can still be friends, Mr. Whitney. Oh, I certainly, Mr. Hastings. I don't see why not. Jenny? Jenny? We're, uh, we're running low on sugar, Dan. I guess you heard, didn't you? Oh, we better order it right away. But maybe only half what we used to, now that this... Jenny, look at me. Oh, Dan, what are we going to do? The town can't support two stores. Well, no, I'm not so sure about that, Jenny. Competition might be a good thing for us and for the customers. Oh, but darling, we've worked here for so many years. This store is part of us. Yes, Jenny. Yep, it is. We've struggled hard here, but we've always come out on top. Surely you aren't going to lose faith in me now. Oh, I never will, Dan. You know that. Ah, uh, then everything's going to work out all right. So long as we believe in each other, everything is possible. I don't know yet how we'll win out, but we will, Jenny. We will together. In just a moment, we'll return to the second act of Yankee Storekeeper, starring Lionel Barrymore. It just seems to be in the very air around us in the springtime, that feeling of joy and happiness we all have and like to share with friends. Perhaps that's why the custom of sending Easter cards has grown so the past few years. It's such a good time to renew friendships and to keep in touch. It gives us an opportunity to share our happiness with those we like in a gracious way, in an inexpensive way, in a way everyone appreciates. If you select your Easter cards from the beautiful ones having Hallmark on the back. For the value of that familiar Hallmark and crown on the back of your cards is recognized by more and more discriminating people every day. It's a symbol of expert craftsmanship and years of creating cards with but one thought in mind. To give you a card that says what you want to say, just the way you want to say it. For every person, every occasion. And to give you a card, you'll be proud to sign with your name. That's why in these days before Easter, you'll find so many people selecting their Easter cards from the Hallmark Collection at fine stores across the country. That's why, too, when your friends receive the Easter card you send, they'll look on the back. If they see that familiar Hallmark on the back of the card, they'll know immediately that you cared enough to send the very best. Now back to James Hilton and the second act of Yankee Storekeeper, starring Lionel Barrymore. The owner of the old-fashioned country store leans against the counter and talks of the old days, and of days not too long past which even young Tom Willis can remember as he listens. I never believe in worrying too much, Tom, because most of the things a man frets about never happen. But the new store did happen. <laughs> yeah. The first Saturday after it opened, I stood outside on the sidewalk and counted the customers. Mr. 
with me? Come on inside. I'd like to show you around. Some other time, George, when you have so many customers. All right. It's payday at the lumber mill, and everybody is stocking up at once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You used to know how it was. And now, well, this is going to be the first Saturday in 20 years that Jenny and I can climb into the old car and go fishing. <laughs> so long, George. <laughs> Don't keep thinking about it, dear. We're on an outing. Let's just enjoy ourselves. Jenny, I never felt so useless in my life. Oh, now, dear, everything will work out. Uh, Dan, that boy up ahead of us. Yeah, he shouldn't be out walking down the middle of the road. What? He looks a lot like... Yes, I'm sure it's Tommy. What's he doing out here six miles out of town? Hello, Tommy? Hey, Right? No, thanks, Mr. Whitney. Where are you going, Tommy? Oh, I don't know. Just away. Ah, 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 ah. So that's it, is it? Your father take you to the woodshed, Tommy? It was on a... on account of my report card. Bad grades, huh? I don't care if I never know how to subtract them. And what's it matter where Brazil is on the map? Jenny, mm-hmm. do you mind if we don't go fishing? Why, Dad? Uh, hop in, Tommy. Go on, up here. We're going back to the store. Maybe I haven't got a customer for all the canned goods on my shelf, but I can sure teach school with them. All right, Tommy. Now, uh, there are 19 cans of beans on that shelf, see? And then I take away six cans. Now, how many cans are there? Uh... Thirteen. Right. And the reason you can't remember where Brazil is, Tommy, is because it's just a name to you. Doesn't matter. But now you take this sack of coffee home to your ma and pa, and when you see him drink it, you say to yourself, that's from Brazil. And then you look up and find it in your geography. to take this report card home, Mr. Whitney. Teacher wants to know if you'd let me bring some of the other kids down to the store after school. Well, why not? Why not? Bring them on, Tommy. Every afternoon, I held class. And it was real fun. Because I found a way to be a use again. Things ran along that way for months, with the store doing almost no business at all. And then, overnight, everything changed. Dan? Dan, look out the window. The lumber mill is on fire. Morning, Dan. Why, hello, Jim. How are you? Oh, so-so. Out of a job, you know. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Like the others. But everything will be all right in six months. Well, that'll be six months. Meantime, man's got to feed his family. Naturally, Jim, naturally. Well, your credit's still good with me, you know. Oh, uh, I, I was ashamed to ask. You needn't be. You needn't be. George has to run the store across the road on a cash basis because he isn't his own boss. But I can operate any way I want. You tell the rest of the mill hands, I'll be glad to see him. Dan, you can't carry the whole town. Jim, how big a potato crop are you expecting this year? Oh, maybe 30 sacks. All right. Now you bring them in here, and I'll trade a few sacks with Mrs. Foster for some of her chickens and eggs. Hank Watson's got a couple of pigs ready for market, and I'll make a deal with him along the same lines. Bartering goods. I never figured I'd see the day we'd go back to that. And why not, Jim? Why not? Maybe an old-fashioned idea, but it's... It's some of those old-fashioned ideas that have built America up, and will keep on building it up. During this 
six months that followed, Jenny and I never worked so hard in our lives. But it paid off. Paid off everybody. In six months, there was a new mill, twice as big, that brought new people to town and meant plenty of business for me and the cash and carry store. And it was all thanks to you, Mr. Whitney. Ah, that's not what I'm driving that time, maybe. When you talk about wanting a job with guaranteed security, all I can think of is the security a man gets through faith in his friends and those who count on him. That comes right back to faith in himself. Oh, well, that's enough talking. I got to finish this inventory. Read me off the last entry I wrote down, will you, son? Uh, 11 sacks of poultry feet. Uh-huh, uh, And those rubber boots over there, three pairs. Doggone, guess that about does it. Yep, probably my last inventory. Mr. Whitney. Yep, putting the store up for sale this week. I'm beginning to creak in the joints, Tom. It's time to start taking it easy. Yeah, but you can't just sit and do nothing. Oh, don't tend to. I'm going to put in a couple of gasoline pumps out in front of the house, and in between tankfuls, I'll sit in my rocker on the front porch and swap stories with the boys. Dad? Yeah, Jenny? Yeah, yeah just getting ready to close up. Came by to pick up some things for supper. Mm-hmm. We need flour and uh, sugar and coffee. May I fill the order for you, Mrs. Whitney? Why, Tom! Oh, it's good to see you. I didn't know you were back in town. He isn't staying, Jenny. He's on his way back to Big City. Oh? Let's see. Flour. Sugar. And a can of coffee. Maybe you don't know it, Mrs. Whitney, but this is from Brazil. (laughs) I guess it'll be a long time before you'll forget that. Oh, never. Never. You taught me a lot of important things, Mr. Whitney, and you're still doing it. What in the world are you two talking about? Oh, that's a long story, Jenny. Long story. Tom, will you toss me a bag for the groceries I want to lock up? Mr. Whitney. Yep. Maybe I won't sell that farm of mine. I could get a loan on it at the bank. A loan? It might be enough for the down payment on your store, and I could pay you the rest out of the earnings. Tom. Why not, son? That's the way I started out. But are you sure this is the business you want? I am now. This is where I belong, at home, with my friends. All right, son. All right, as far as I'm concerned, your words for the deal. Quite enough. Here are the keys. From now on, it's all yours to lock up. Now, Jenny? Yes, dear. Goodbye, Tom. I'll be seeing you every day, Mrs. Whitney. So long, Tom. So long. Dan? Yeah? You don't seem a bit sad to give it up. I'm not. I'm not. We need to have more time for each other, Jenny. We'll go on to picnics and catch up on our fish. Yes. Oh. It'll be so much fun. Mind you, I'm not talking like an old man. No. No. I'll be tending our gas station, and Tom will be needing advice. Of course, dear, of course. Doggone, whatever made me tell that boy I'm creaking in the joints? You and I aren't old at all, Jenny. Not in the least, dear, not in the least. I look at the roses in your cheeks. (laughs) You have them too, dear. Yeah, sure. (laughs) We got plenty of good days ahead of us. Just fill your lungs with this wonderful country air and know it. Smell the fresh turned earth and the new grass coming up. You hear the birds? Mm-hmm. Ah, it's spring. Yes, sir. It's always been spring for us, Jenny. For you and me together. And it always will be.
Barrymore and James Hilton will return in a moment. A wise man once said, laughter is the medicine of the soul. And if you've ever noticed, it's a happy moment when we see a patient chuckle or even smile. For then we know he's on the first step toward recovery. That's undoubtedly why so many people like to send humorous Hallmark cards. They're fun to send and to receive. And did you ever stop to think there's no other gift that actually has its own bubbling good humor, its own laughter built right in? Humorous cards are a big part of the Hallmark collection at fine stores everywhere. You can find ones for Easter, birthdays, anniversaries, get well, and most every occasion that's part of our days. There's even quite a selection of Hallmark cards for April Fool's Day. These are gay and merry cards designed to bring a smile to the lips and a twinkle to the eye. And of course, like all Hallmark cards, whether humorous or serious, there's a quality about them that speaks for itself, that reflects your good taste. It's that quality that's symbolized by the familiar hallmark on the back. That hallmark which tells your friends you cared enough to send the very best. Here again is James Hilton. This evening will certainly go down as a red-letter one on our hallmark playhouse, Mr. Barrymore, and we all thank you for a grand performance. Oh, I'm glad you liked it, Jimmy. I'm glad you liked it. Those early storekeepers had a bigger part than most of us realize in building America up, you know... I used to love going into one of those old-time general stores. Couldn't pass one by without going in and taking a good look around. <laughs> times have certainly changed since those early days, haven't they? Well, times change, but, but the real fundamentals stay the same, Jimmy. People still enjoy knowing each other, knowing other people, and being kind to others. It's just that nowadays we're all so rushed. That's why your Hallmark cards are so important these days. They help us keep in touch. They show someone we're thinking of them, even if we don't get in to see them so often. It's good to hear you say that, Lionel. Well, I and mean... we like to think the shows on our Hallmark Playhouse reflect that same warmth and friendliness. Uh, I, I, I think the way they do, Jimmy. What are you going to have next week? Next week, we shall have a delightful story by Marjorie Sharp entitled Lisa Lillywhite. Uh -huh. And to play the charming Miss Lillywhite, we've invited Angela Lansbury to join us. Uh -huh. Our Hallmark Playhouse is every Thursday. Our producer-director is Bill Gay. Our music is composed and conducted by David Rose. And our script tonight was adapted by Leonard St. Clair. Until next Thursday, then, this is James Hilton saying good night. <laughs> for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. The role of Jenny tonight was played by Lorene Tuttle and Tom Willis by Eddie Firestone. Others in our cast were Barbara Jean Wong, Ted DeCorsia, Polly Bear, and Ted Osborne. Every Sunday afternoon on television, Hallmark cards present Sarah Churchill, who brings you the story of interesting people on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Consult your local newspaper for time and station. This is Frank Goss saying good night to you all until next week at the same time when Hallmark Playhouse returns to present Angela Lansbury in Marjorie Sharp's Lisa Lillywhite and the week following Lou Wallace's Ben Hur starring Jeff Chandler and the week after that George Garland's Doubtful Valley on the Hallmark Playhouse. <laughs> Stay tuned for Mr. Chameleon which will be heard over most of these stations. This is the CBS Radio Network. This is KMBC, Kansas City, Missouri.